Okay, we are officially live. We are officially live on both. All right, let's do this. All right, so thank you guys for uh, joining. This is the third episode of uh, Listen Up, You May Learn Something Today, and a very special guest here, uh, Kaz. Uh, how's it going? How are you? I'm doing well. Happy to be here. Yeah. Hey, I'm, I'm, I'm excited for this one. I'm definitely excited for this one. And uh, so before we get started, do you kind of want to talk about yourself a little bit, you know, kind of share, um, you know, a little bit about yourself that maybe the average person doesn't know? Uh, my kids are first generation immigrants. So I'm an immigrant. Nice. Nice, nice. Yeah, born in okay. Greece, uh, came here when I was three years old and living the American dream. Nice, 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 nice. Okay. Um, you want to just get right into it? We're just going to just, just, just dive right in? Just shield away. Dive right in. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to shield the questions so you don't <laughs> see them. I, I want the sticker. The one cheap? The, the, the sticker shock as, as, uh, aspect of it. But uh, so I'm going to ask the uh, first question uh, that I ask every single person, whether it's on the street or you know, in the uh, uh, podcast setting. But what motivates you? I was thinking about this on the way up here. <laughs> Matter of fact, um, I'm part of a mastermind group and, you know, it had me get up and speak and they asked me, you know, what's my motivation? And um, it's really uh, the fear of failure. Nice, 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 nice. Yeah, I, I that is what drives me um, and the vision of where I want to be. So, you know, I've, I've taken a lot of turns in my life. I've taken a lot of forks in the road that's brought me here. But, um, you know, I, I, I know where I want to be in life now because, you know, getting through life uh, at, at a younger age, I didn't know where I was going to be. I had no, I had no vision. Yeah. All I did was I saw where friends of mine's parents were mm -hmm. and like, oh, things are possible. The question is, what's the roadmap? Yeah. And, um, in probably the last five years, I decided to take a turn from solo entrepreneurship to partnering and bigger projects where we're bringing friends, mm -hmm. family, business associates together, and now we're putting together bigger deals and um, we analyze them, we see where they're gonna go, run the numbers, and then we see where the vision is. So the deal is at this point, back to fear of failure. Uh, once I bring people in with me, that's my drive. They're gonna succeed because I know I'll, I, I will do whatever I can to make this project profitable, yeah. successful. I, I can't imagine having a project that goes under, luckily, knock on wood, you know, 30 years, I haven't had a project that went belly up. Yeah. So um, that's a long answer to a short no, question. <laughs> no, I mean, that's a, that's a really good answer. And, you know, and, and it's funny too, because you'll hear that concept from a lot of different people of, you know, don't work with friends, don't work with family, um, you know, don't work with people you know, you know, especially when it comes to real estate, because obviously there's just so many unknown factors that go into it. But, you know, you've kind of taken that and, and, you know, went the opposite way and said, hey, I, it sounds like you want to build wealth for your friends. You want to build wealth for your family. You want to bring these people in to the success, um, the, you know, that you've had you know, over the last well, long time. To be honest with you, family's more critical than anybody else. Mm -hmm. And I, I've done some deals with my family mm -hmm. and uh, I had different visions and they did mm -hmm. and didn't quite work out. And that's yeah. OK. Yeah. yeah. We still made money on it. Yeah. But, you know, um, I, I'm very unemployable right now. Uh, I, I, <laughs> um, whatever I'm doing, I'm doing for long legacy wealth at this point. Nice. You know, and, and I've learned a lot of things over the last 30 years doing this business, 31 years. But um, family, it's interesting. They're your biggest critics. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm really doing business with people I know, like, and trust. Yes. Exactly. You know, and the trust factor is there and, and we have to have, be aligned morally, ethically, and uh, vision, as a vision of where we want to be in the future. Yeah. So, uh, and, 
you know, I, I'm not young anymore, but I've, I've bumped into people that I've gotten to know over time and I, you know, brought them along with me and said, listen, you want to buy multifamily? I want to buy multifamily. I try to learn how to do that back in 2010, right? The crash. And I read a book. There's no way you're going to do this thing by reading the book. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so I, I signed up for mentorship through different programs and that's really the key in life. Um, duplicating other successes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, and I was really sick of, uh, making mistakes. Yeah. So the school of hard knocks is very expensive. <laughs> yes. I know that. Trust me. I, I know that very well. Uh, okay, nice. All right. So I'm going to move on, uh, to the next question here. So how did you get started and, and kind of, you know, take it back for, you know, all the way, all the way back to maybe not even kind of just real estate related, but kind of, how did you get started on this entrepreneurial path? Um, you know, of, Hey, I just, you know, most people just don't wake up and say, I want to work for myself. Right? Like, I guess what was, how did you get started in that? And, and what was kind of the motivating factor behind that? Oh, well, I, I worked with other people for other people mm -hmm. and it was, uh, my soul was being killed. Yeah. I couldn't do it. Mm -hmm. Uh, I, I have to do something that I can see myself growing and building security. So, nice. you know, my father, when he came to this country, he, you know, he had very hard work ethic. He'd get up every morning, he'd go to the restaurant, he'd be mm -hmm. the chef, doing his own thing. I mean, not his own thing, he has to work for somebody else. But, you know, I, I saw a good work ethic in him. Um, didn't see him very much because restaurants are, you know, a 24 8 job. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, I saw he always got up, always went to work, always made a productive day. And, you know, as I, I I've done just about everything. I mean, my mom laughs at, me thinking about what, how many jobs I've had through high school and after high school, trying to find my road, mm -hmm. trying to figure out what I'm good at. Yeah. I remember eighth grade, talked to a friend of mine that was going to Bowling Green. He knew what I was going to do when he gets out of high school. And I'm like, I don't know what I'm good at. Yeah. I have no idea, but, yeah. but I'm, I'm an entrepreneur. That's, mm -hmm. that's, I, I'm looking to grow something, build something yeah. uh, bigger than what I am. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, did I answer that question? No, yeah, you did. You did. Okay. And you definitely kind of, you know, touched on something too that, you know, really kind of made me think just as far as, you know, the entrepreneurial aspect. Because, you know, yeah, as an entrepreneur, right, there's, and I think there's a lot of different categories of entrepreneur, but, you know, you know that, okay, I want to be successful and I want to build this long generational wealth. Um, you know, but how do you do that? Right. You know, um, I don't, it, you know, maybe there are books out there, but it's, there's not a, like how to build, you know, generational wealth, you know, starting in eighth grade. Right. I mean, yeah. it's, just, it's, it's tough. It's like, well, I want that, you know, I want to build that, but how do I do it? So I, I think it's cool too to kind of navigate through life to figure out not only what I like, but you know, what am I good at? And, you know, also do I like it? There's just so many people who, you know, just, uh, I kind of like walking around like zombies. Right. And just, you know, living for the weekends and, and just, you know, doing things for a paycheck. And it sounds like you're the same way, but I, I couldn't do that. Right. I just couldn't do something because of the money. I really have to enjoy what I do. And, and, you know, that's why I like real estate so much because every, every day is new. I'm sure. You know, right. I mean, <laughs> let, me, let me jump back a little bit. Um, way back in the day, I was selling uh, financial products, insurance, investments, things of that nature. And uh, it was somewhat entrepreneurial. As a matter of fact, even before that, I was doing door-to-door -door book sales. Nice. Uh, I was in a, a junior in college. I didn't know, I had no skills. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I need to do something. So I did a co-op job where I ended up as on a need-to-know basis on where you're going to go sell books and how you're going to do it. Mm -hmm. So they, uh, I hooked up with two guys from Kent State. We drove down to... I think it was Tennessee. Okay. And all we had to do is bring $250 with us, and then the rest is on a need to basis. Okay. Showed us how to sell. Then they told us we're going to go sell wherever. These guys are going to New Mexico. I went to Connecticut. Uh, Connecticut. I, I thought I was going to come back to Fairmont, Ohio, and sell mm -hmm. books. I had no idea they were going to put me in Connecticut. <laughs> then they, they gave me these pitches on how to, <laughs> how to find somewhere to live. Mm -hmm. We had nowhere to live. Yeah. Wow. So go there and you figure it out, uh, you yeah. gotta pitch and you knock on doors and ask people, you know, if you don't mind putting up some college kids for the summer while we're selling books. Really? Yeah. Wow. 
And then you had to get a, uh, had, a <laughs> had a map of the whole county, you knock on every single door, and you're collecting money, half the money up front to survive on, and then they collect the balance of when you deliver the books. See, that was hardcore sales. <laughs> wow. So, I mean, and, and I wasn't driven by making money. These other kids are doing it by, you know, I wanna make so much money this summer. I was like, I just wanted to succeed. Yeah. I just didn't wanna fail. Wow. And uh, I got the persistence award. Wow. Because I just, <laughs> as difficult as it was trying to figure this out, um, I just kept going, wow. kept going. Wow. And, and then I came out of that into insurance and uh, investments. And that was more entrepreneurial. Somebody gave me leads and I went out and made sales. Nice. And then I came back and then I got into real estate around 1991. Wow. And then I had to figure out how does this work? Cause I'm, I'm not sure if you know the name of this guy, but uh, Carlton Sheets. Have you heard about uh, I've, I've, I've heard of him, yes. Then heard there's the Ron Legrand. Yep, heard okay. of the name. I wasn't a great student, so <laughs> I, I'm thinking to myself, how, I'm, how am I gonna make money? And yeah. of course, I kept hearing, you know, Carlton Streets, uh, no money down program. Yeah, yeah. So I got out of investments, I got the VHS tapes, and I started listening to these things. And I'm thinking, okay, let's figure out how this stuff works. Yeah. I'm gonna figure this out. Yeah. So then uh, it just gave me enough uh, knowledge to keep going forward, nice. but not the step-by-step. Step. Nice. And then I saw my brother buying some foreclosures. I'm like, I gotta figure this out too. How, how these, how's he doing that? Mm -hmm. So what I do, I go to the courthouse and I start pulling up all the foreclosure cases and reading every single case and trying to figure out where the equity is yeah. and knocking on doors wow. and getting deals. That's really wow. where my start, uh, where I began in real estate is buying foreclosure properties. Wow, nice. Seems like that, you know, summer job, you know, obviously kind of translated into, you know, translated into this. Well, translated into into that. Into yeah, and who I am now. Yeah. I mean, it's heart wrenching, you know, knocking on doors mm -hmm. and getting a lot of no's. Yeah. And, oh yeah. And you know, I'm not a religious guy, but I found God that summer. Like, <laughs> oh, what's happening? And, but uh, yeah, it it was. Uh, and of course, the company was Southwestern Company. It used to be a Bible company, so door to door mm, Bibles. Nice. I was selling educational material and cookbooks. I see. Nice. Great cookbook. I still yeah. use it now. Okay. Nice. <laughs> that's cool. No, that, that that's cool, and it's and it's a it's a cool story because I think a lot of times too we don't, you know, growing up, you know, as as kids, you know, I used to be a caddy. Um, so was I. You know, I uh, and I worked at a nightclub in Las Vegas. So I was a nightclub promoter. So I was just basically handing out flyers in Las Vegas Boulevard, and and it, I got used to hearing no, um, and I didn't get comfortable with hearing no. I just got used to okay, well, you know, it's on to the next one. I mean, I, I kind of joked around and said, you know, I would literally ask 50 people and, and you know, five people would stop, you know, and, and two would actually talk to me and one would actually come. So, you know, you, you I kind of got used to that. And especially now when I do the man on the street, you know, type interviews. I love those, by the way. Yeah, I appreciate it. Uh, but it, it's it's the same numbers, right? I mean, it's like literally I, I ask 50 people, you know, maybe five will stop and, and you know, three you you know, will actually be interested and, and two people actually do an interview, right? So, but it's it's getting out of that mindset of like, you know, oh, I hear no, therefore I'm just gonna give up. It's like, no, you know, that no is just getting me closer to a yes. So that, that's interesting that you say that and, and kind of translating, you know, that previous job into what you do today. So, um, okay, so, so far in life, who's been your biggest inspiration? All right, click my memory banks. I, I, I guess, you know, with work ethic, it's my father. Nice. Just because nice. he showed me what a man has to do. Yeah. Um, and, and beyond that, uh, it's just learning from other people who've done things that I want to do. Nice. Um, I mean, inspirationally, you know, um, I, I had the base. I mean, I had a family that loved me, took care of me, mm -hmm. um, put the basics on the table, yeah. and the rest is all up to me. I didn't have that template, yeah. that roadmap, yeah. I had to figure out my way through life. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, about five years ago, when I decided to get out of being a solo entrepreneur, mm -hmm. um, I started listening to a lot of podcasts, mm -hmm. and that has really opened up my eyes of what's 
out there, what's available. I mean, I, we, we lived in a neighborhood where I was growing up that was like right next to uh, middle lower class, but then right behind us was the upper class neighborhood. So I saw those visions of what you know, people were doing, big mm -hmm. houses, how did yep. they do this? Yeah, what's step yep. by step? Yep. Um, and you know, I'm not one to reinvent the wheel. Um, and about five years ago, I decided I need to partner. Yeah. I need to get out and find my people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I got on Bigger Pockets, that's a big podcast. Uh, and I met up with a guy that had a meetup group up in Brexville and started chatting with him. And that was my first venture out of entre uh, solo entrepreneurship into more expansion of my knowledge and uh, my, my group of people that really think the same way I do. Yeah. And now I'm organizing that group that yeah. I jump into. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, okay. So it's been a big transition, but you know, through the podcast, I've heard of people, heard of what they're doing. Mm -hmm. I saw what what they're doing uh, online, and I, you know, in, in this business, I've heard of this term R and D, mm -hmm. which is not research and development; it's rip off and duplicate. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, what I'm doing, I'm, I'm taking what people have done and I'm duplicating. So yeah. well, I, I've gone further in the last four years than I have the last 27. Nice, nice. Just by duplicating what other successes are. And of course, you know, in this industry, it's m more of a pay to play. If you want to be around those people that have done what you want to do, mm -hmm. it costs money to be in these mastermind groups or mm -hmm. go to mastermind events or, yeah. um, and I, I, sometimes I was too cheap way back when to do that. Mm -hmm. I did buy the Carol and Cheese program. Yeah. I don't know where those tapes are. <laughs> I don't think I even own a VCR anymore. <laughs> but um, you, you, you got to just start, you know, yeah. take two step forwards, one step back. And, yeah, yeah. and keep going forward and surround yourself with people that bring value to your life. Yeah. And you bring value to their life. Yeah, definitely. No, yeah. 100% agree, and, and yeah, you know, I try to do the same way, you know, same thing, but yeah, you know, obviously successful people, you know, tend to hang out with successful people, right, and and just understanding the mindset and, and, and you know, why people are successful and, and whatnot, and you can definitely tell, I mean, you know, just hanging out with you and, and hanging out with, you know, obviously that group, you know, of, of, of people, you know, just think differently, you know, the conversations are obviously higher level, um, you know, the quote unquote, day to day problems, you know, you don't really talk about that too much as far as, you know, hey, I don't know, it, you know, it, I'm, I, I'm on E, I've been on an E and I got to wait till Friday to get paid, right? Like we don't really have those types of conversations. There's nothing wrong, you know, with, with people having those conversations. But, you know, when you hang out with just high level, successful people, you know, those usually aren't the problems. It's, you know, I need to make, you know, I need to somehow raise $500,000 in, in two weeks, right? You know, those are the conversations that are being had. And, you know, it's when you really take a step back, it's like, man, you know, I, I shouldn't even be in the same room as these people, let alone, you know, having these conversations. So uh, that, that's really cool. I, I see what you mean. I mean, I, I mean, that's that's when I started joining these meetups. Mm -hmm. I'm like, these people are talking my language. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, because, you know, the person that has the nine to five mm -hmm. who lives for the that paycheck of the week mm -hmm. and takes that weekend off. I don't take weekends off because I like what I do. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I'm always working. I mean, yeah. sometimes I don't even know what day it is. Yeah, it's yeah. just like I, I know what I got to do. I know what the next step is. I know uh, I have to put out content. Mm -hmm. I know I have to, you know, uh, send stuff to my investors. Yeah, uh, it's just all these little jobs that I'm doing that I'm now bringing in people like my partner Bruce Zake. Mm -hmm. He's uh, a master at uh, the. Uh, internet, uh, he set up our website, mm -hmm. he handled all the backend stuff, and he's a very detail-oriented guy. I'm not. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm more, I look at the big picture, yeah. I know where we need to go, yeah. and uh, I don't want to say I'm Steve Jobs, but Steve Jobs didn't know how to build an iPhone, yeah. Yeah. but he knew what he wanted. Exactly, yeah. And he built, brought the people in yeah. to help him achieve that goal. Yep. So, um, I'm always looking for those people that I can partner with that have these skill sets that I don't have yeah. or I don't want. I'm difficult. It's difficult for me to do because yeah. there's only one of me. Exactly. Um, and uh, Bruce has been a godsend, you know, and we find ourselves later in life where he was trying to do what I wanted to do and I was trying to do what he wanted to do. Mm -hmm. I'm like, Bruce, listen, I signed up for this Michael Blanc program. I got this analyzer. Um, let's go. Let's team up. Mm -hmm. So we teamed up. We started Cypress Ventures Group. And, uh, and then under that, we've accumulated, you know, uh, 
a lot of, I mean, self storage and apartment buildings. Yeah. So it, it's just bringing in the right people in your life, the right time um, that you can trust. And I don't look at the details. I know he's handling the money in. Mm -hmm. I know he's handling the internet. I know he's handling uh, uh, the merging systems together. And I'm looking for the next deal and bringing in partners. Yeah. Nice. No, that's awesome. That, that, yeah, that's that, that's really cool. And like I said, I, uh, I, I, I want to say it's his wife, I believe, who maybe taught me at, at Kent State. This was many, many years Journalism. ago. Journalism. Yeah, yeah. We, we put that. Yeah, she's know, still there. We, we put that together. So, yeah. It's, well, that's funny. Yeah, small world. Wow. Uh, I, it, it, I, I do say that a lot, you know, as far as a small world. But what I, you know, kind of caught myself a couple years ago saying, it is a small world, but the, the people who are doing what they need to be doing, the successful people, the hard workers, always find a way to essentially meet each other. Um, you know, what is it? I don't know. You know, so many billions of people, you know, in this world, but how many people are actually going out there, shaking hands, networking, and, and doing those things? You know, eventually those people will. You got to get out of your four walls. Yes. And there's a whole world out there. Once you start bumping shoulders, I mean, I'm going to the mastermind uh, event down in Arizona, one, one in New Orleans, um, a part of a bigger group now, and they all think similarly. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it, it's fun being around them because we're really brainstorming, sharing ideas, mm -hmm. sharing attorneys, mm -hmm. sharing whatever it is. And uh, we're learning how to maneuver through the market, sharing content, yeah. uh, a little bit of everything. We're, we're really, helping each other. Yeah. And I'm all about, you know, I got all this stuff that I've done. If you need to get to the next step, you can have it. Yeah. You can go ahead and, I mean, it's, I've, I've done it already. Yeah. I'll give you everything I need. Yeah. No harm, no file. Yeah. We'll, we'll do business eventually. Yeah. But you exactly. got trust in that. Yeah. No, that's, that's cool. And it's that, you know, the different mindset, right? Because I think sometimes too, when you don't have that success, you know, you have that scarcity mindset of I'm not going to share my ideas with you because you know you're going to be more successful than me and you know I think especially with me right like people have, hey how did you start th this podcast how did you do this it's like hey this is you know th this is how I did it you know essentially you can lead a horse to water uh, you know you can't make a drink and, and that's kind of the mindset I have too with a lot of this stuff right like hey how did you start the networking event how did you it's like here's how I did it um, you know and I want you to be successful because I think you know no number one I don't want to say competition you know but it's also gonna put me on my game because you know I need to come out with better content I need to you know make sure I'm following up with people different things like that so yeah I think that's 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 really cool um, okay so uh, would you rather have five hundred thousand dollars right now or a thousand dollars a week for the rest of your life so 500k right now or take a thousand dollars a week for the rest of your life I thought about this <laughs> and I know what it takes to get a property uh -huh. and that is a little money machine call it ATM okay nice. got a bunch of properties got a bunch of little ATMs yes, yes. right that's little ATMs keep kicking out money correct so with a half a million bucks I can buy a lot of little ATMs yes that will kick out a thousand dollars a week yes so five hundred thousand nice 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 that's it, and it's it's an unpopular one, believe it or not. Um, you know, a lot of people on the street, you know, it's say, a minimalist th uh, thought process at a thousand dollars a week because they're thinking of what they're making now. And yes, and that's it. Exactly, it, it, exactly. And I actually talked about this with Kelly because I, you know, it's the, the average person that I do ask on the street probably doesn't have real estate or probably doesn't invest in you know a income producing vehicle where they see kickbacks monthly. You know, as you know, most of us do in real estate. So yeah, I think that extra thousand dollars a week to them is okay. Well, you know, I already make eight hundred, seven hundred, a thousand, whatever it is. You know, so that bumps it up to two thousand. I can live comfortably. But you know, at least a lot of times when I get these answers, I haven't heard of anybody saying, "Hey, I'm going to save up twenty thousand, then I'm going to buy something else, and then continue to get that." It's always been the well, I'm able to relax a little bit, um, and it talks about that mindset of like just that entrepreneurial mindset of like. You know what what is relax right i have another question coming up but like, i have a hard time doing that by yeah the way. It, it, exactly yeah. right it, it's it's like what is relax you know what is enough money to relax um it, you know i don't know i, I don't know if there's a, a dollar amount to literally say okay i've made enough money where i'm just gonna wake up and watch tv all day but that means you don't like what you're doing true it, true that's actually a, that's a valid point too i mean that means you, the, the end result is i want to sit around and watch tv yeah mm-hmm you know, yeah. I mean, it, if I'm not being productive that day, 
I get depressed. Yeah. I need to be productive, whether I'm putting paint on a wall mm -hmm. or whether I'm you know knocking down a hundred unit building yeah. with, with partners. Yeah. It's just and sometimes to be honest with you, painting sort of you know, uh, it's, it's soothing. Yeah. I mean, I was in my apartment complex just yesterday and I saw that the painter didn't do exactly what I wanted, but the brush is right there. So I grabbed that brush and I started going at it. You know, you know it's almost artistic. Yeah. You know, I had, yeah, yeah. It, it worked on the right side of the brain as opposed to the left side of the brain. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Oh yeah. That's funny. All right. So, um, it, it makes you very, uh, excited about this one. So if, if you had to make $1 million in 30 days, what would be your strategy? Like one one million dollars in, in, in thirty days. I've seen it done, okay. But the people who have done it, they tag onto all their assets. Okay. What I mean is that they have the assets already there. Okay. And they pull from those assets. Okay. And or raise money on the next deal. So okay. we're, we're raising money right now for a two hundred unit complex. So uh, we're gonna put a deal out into the ether mm -hmm. to our partners that will make X amount of return over a period of time and so much generational wealth. Nice. So that is it, our next indication. Nice, nice. So it's it basically just, you know, bringing a deal to people and saying, hey, would you like to invest in this? You know, would you like to put your money into this? You know, obviously the kickback, we are going to pay you, you know, a, a residual. They get a preferred rate of return. Okay. They get equity. They get appreciation, depreciation. It's almost one of those no-brainer yeah. sort of deals that, yeah. uh, you know, we're bringing value to people. Yeah. By bringing value, when she, you know, Carl, not Carlton Sheets, um, Zig Ziglar said, mm -hmm. you know, if you help enough people get get what they want, mm -hmm. eventually you get what you want. Yeah. So I'm almost talking always about giving people what they want. Eventually, mm -hmm. I will get paid. Yeah. But yeah. it's all about bringing value. Nice. Yeah. And that's it. I would have to put together the next deal. Yeah. Nice. Because okay. that's where I'm at now. I'm not doing any single families anymore. Yeah. It's all about apartments and self storage just sort of came along with the ride. Nice. 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 Yeah. That's no, it's, it, it's, it, you know, it's really cool that you at least, you know, talk that aspect of things because, you know, I think a lot of people are, you know, some people think, okay, I don't have money, therefore I don't bring value. It's like, no, you know, you, you do bring value because there's a lot of people with money who just, they don't want to swing a hammer. You know, they don't know how to find the deal. They don't know, they don't, or want to, you know, find the deal. Um, and, and I think there's value in anything and value in everything. Um, you know, but people have, you know, approached me and said, hey, we should invest, you know, together. But it's like, okay, do you have the money? No, I don't. Okay. <laughs> do you have the expertise? No, I don't. All right, so uh, <laughs> you got to bring something to the table, yes, right? Yeah, right. What, what do you got? Uh, yeah. Are you going to swing a hammer? Yeah, uh, you know. I mean, it, it, I, okay. What my my big value is? I made a lot of mistakes. Yeah, exactly. I know what yeah. I know what not to do anymore. Exactly. And now I'm following. Well, again, back to uh, when Bruce and I started our company. You know, we we're looking at small properties, like a 15 mm -hmm. unit property. Mm -hmm. And then we spent probably ten thousand dollars just inspections that and the other, and it didn't mm -hmm. work out. Yeah. I'm like, you know what? We gotta stop making these mistakes. Yeah. So we signed up for these mastermind groups. That now that's the roadmap. They're yeah. doing. They have four or five thousand units. So I'm like, okay, let's yeah. We let's let's know what not to do. That yeah. we know that fifteen units is way too small for various reasons that I know now. Yeah. And that a hundred units is where I really need to be yeah. because of what I. When, how how that business operates? Yeah. It can it can sustain itself. Yeah, and I can hire professionals as yeah. opposed to Joe, you know Joe Blow contractor yeah. with a pickup truck is falling apart. Yeah, and he can't barely get to work. Yeah, so I can yeah. hire a company to yes. manage that property. So I, I'm really jumping from you know uh, again back to being a solo entrepreneur mm -hmm. to be a a, a and syndicator investor a businessman with running a business as opposed yeah. to just getting by with a property here and there. Yeah. So it's really, it's a chasm between the two. Nice. Um, single family guys don't know how to do multifamily. Mm -hmm. And those two groups of people don't intermix because mm -hmm. it's a whole different world. Yeah, true. Yeah. And you have to have partners, you have to have investors, you have to have these deals, you have to have relationships with the realtors, with mm -hmm. everybody else. Mm -hmm. That really, it comes with your um, reputation. Yeah, oh yeah. 
uh, and then doing a deal and ex executing, yeah. and now they know, okay, this guy's serious. Yeah. Oh, you yeah. Know, getting the time of day. Uh, yeah, 100%. I think once people realize you're actually a, a legit buyer, right? I mean, you know, the barrier to entry in real estate obviously is very low. Anybody can, you know, just wake up and say, I'm a real estate investor, wholesaler, you know, um, you know, buy and hold guy, you know. But when you actually buy homes, you know, when you actually close on deals, when you walk properties and, and, and don't ask for a lot, you know, on the inspection, you know, people, you know, start to take notice and say, hey, I'm gonna come to you with this deal. You know, I'm gonna offer this to you for $10,000 less than I'm gonna go to the market with it because I know you can close, I know you're, you're easy to deal with and um, it, you know, you're not gonna call me two weeks you know, and, and say, hey, why didn't you disclose this or why didn't you know about this? It's like, well, this is, you know, it's, it's a, <laughs> you know, a broken, uh, uh, it, you know, a broken pipe underneath the ground that I had no idea about, right? Yeah. You know, so. And it's, it's really pretty simple, I mean, Whoever's name's on the deed controls the property. Yeah, that's Simple it. as that. That's it. That's I it. I mean, I've gotten people that had houses in foreclosure situations that just signed me over the deed. Yeah. And then whatever came with that property, I already knew because I did my homework. Mm -hmm. I know mm -hmm. when he leans on the property. Mm -hmm. and, you know, I sold the next day and made a spread. And yeah. it was as easy as that. Yeah. You know, uh, it's, <laughs> that's it. I mean, it's, some people think it's very complicated. Mm -hmm. Well, when you pull in a bunch of realtors on side fighting, yeah. and then you pull in attorneys who are fighting yeah. and all this stuff, it's just you and the guy that owns the property, really. Yeah. And you're trying to solve a problem that he has. It's, yeah, that's it. That is it. So true. So, so true. Basic so, business. Yeah, basic business. Business 101, solve, mm -hmm. solve a problem. So, um, okay. How do you stay so motivated? Again, if I'm not accomplishing something, I get depressed. Yeah. I don't like being depressed. Yeah. So each day I gotta be pushing that rock forward. Nice. Um, and you can't really teach motivation. No. <laughs> I mean, you better you don't. Yeah, exactly. You know, exactly. Some guys show up or they don't. Yeah, 100%. You know, the guys that don't show up, it's like, you know, what are they doing with their life? Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. I'm giving them opportunity because I bring them into a deal or mm -hmm. I, I, I just lately I tried to uh, pull somebody and his wife into my business and show them everything I know. Mm -hmm. They didn't show up. Yeah, that's... I mean, if only I had that opportunity. Exactly right. My son, you know, he's 16, and he finally got interested in what I was doing. Yeah. So I put, put out an article how to get how you can pay for college for your kid for free, uh, and. Uh, how you can do that with a property. Mm -hmm. And he read that, he's like, Dad, did you do that, do that for me? Like, no, I didn't, but <laughs> I was too busy trying to put food on the table. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I didn't have time to do one property just for that, but you know, I still pay for his college, yeah. uh, for college. Yeah. But he got very interested, and then I showed him um, how I found foreclosure properties back to my roots, uh -huh. I can do that in my sleep. Yeah. And then we looked at the whole list of properties, and I go, hey, there's a property right here that, you know, this." this address, uh, this street, you know, I recognize that street. It's this kind of neighborhood. And then uh, we started looking at the auditor card on it and lo and behold, that's the house that I used to own. Oh, wow. So it's coming up for tax foreclosure again. <laughs> <laughs> so he's like, dad, let's go talk to the guy. I'm like, right, right now? Okay, great. Yeah. So we got dressed, went out there, knocked on the door, talked to the guy. He had no idea his house in foreclosure. Wow. Um, so it's like really, I was showing a 16 year old that's yeah. now six foot four. Yeah. He, he was my, you know, he had a broken arm. So he's my, you know, crippled contractor uh, <laughs> when I was out there talking to the guy. But, you know, these lessons that I've learned, uh, you know, I'll give that information away. I don't mm -hmm. care. When, yeah. I go, when, I, when I went to my last, my last meetup, mm -hmm. you know, I was talking to um, Mitch. Okay. And, uh, Right there, I showed him, he was talking about, you know, sending out thousands of flyers all over the place. Well, that's one way to do it. Mm -hmm. Or you can just look for the equity and go yeah. for the equity. Yeah. Yeah. And right there on my cell phone, I showed him how to do that. Yeah. Oh, no skin off my back. Yeah, exactly. You know, but he brought value to him. Mm -hmm. If he can make money on it, fantastic. Yeah. yeah, I'm happy for him. Yeah, that's that's awesome, yeah. No, it's uh, Money Mitch, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> money, money. Uh, you know, money, Mitch. Yeah, and it's cool too. Uh, you know, you're right. You can't teach motivation. You can't teach somebody how to be motivated. And you can't teach somebody how to want it. But, you know, I think it is what's kind of each of us has it differently, right? I think there's some days we're more motivated than others. But, you know, kind of, I always kind of say, 
to myself, keep myself productively busy, right? Like, I mean, nobody's forcing me to do this podcast. Obviously, nobody's forcing me to do the man on the street stuff. Nobody's forcing me to even be, you know, a, a real estate agent, make calls or phone calls or, you know, whatnot. So I think it's just, you know, I always kind of say keeping yourself busy is, is what it brings value to your life. It, 100%. Yes. Uh, 100%. You feel better about yourself. Yes. Oh, yeah. When there's days when I just kind of sit around, I, you know, I feel like I'm letting so many people down. Um, you know, I, your life's passing you by. Yes, exactly. Exactly. You know, I, I make the joke. I don't you know, have any kids as of, you know, as of right now, but I make the joke that my nieces and nephews are sitting here kind of watching me. You know, and when I don't do something, when I tell myself, hey, I'm going to do this or I'm going to do that and I don't do it, I feel like I'm letting them down. You know, do they know that I let them down? No. But in my mind, they expect me to be successful. So when I don't do things that I should be doing, I, I'm not only just letting them down, but you know, I'm, I'm letting- You're a role model. Yes, I, I like to think of it that way. They may not agree with that, but <laughs> I like to think of it you know, like that. But most kids know everything already. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, they're all, you know, they know everything. Yes. Because they have yes. TikTok. Yes, exactly. Uh, <laughs> but you know, you're, you're really intelligent when you know you don't know anything. Yeah. And that you have so much more to learn. Yes, oh yeah. Um, cause I'm learning every day. Mm -hmm. I love to learn a new trick, a new technique, uh, mm -hmm. whatever, a new relationship, whatever mm -hmm. it is that, you know, cause life is a, it's a growing process. You're, every day you have to be growing. Yes. Uh, stagnant people die. Mm -hmm. I mean, oh, yeah. I mean, there's, there's no retirement. I mean, I, I, I love what I'm doing here. I'm yeah. just going to be doing it forever. Bruce is older than me. He's never going to retire. Yeah. Well, I'm so. We just make sure we have enough life insurance on each other that <laughs> when, when the first of us that kicks the bucket, the other one's not left home in the bag. <laughs> I like it. Nice, 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 nice. Okay. All right. So I, I got another either or question okay. for you. So would you rather have $3 million right now or go back to high school with the knowledge that you know today? Knowledge is power. Yes. I'm going back to high school. Nice. Um, because, you know, in life, there's always that fork in the road. Mm -hmm. And whatever job you do in high school, a lot of people, you know, after high school, whatever job it is, they sort of like take that route the rest of their life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, because that's what they did when they first became an adult. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I've taken a lot of forks in the road. But, you know, a, a trajectory of somebody can be moved with just a nudge. Yeah. Yep. You know, hitting a meteor coming to the earth, nudge it a fraction of an inch, it's gonna miss the earth. Yep. But um, knowing what I know now, I, I would have made other choices in business. I would have been a buy and hold guy. I would have not sold anything because, you know, when I had a mortgage company one time and an investor was coming to me, I've done a lot of investor loans. And he would ask me, so should I sell this property, make 30,000 mm -hmm. or should I make hundred dollars a month or mm -hmm. two hundred dollars a month? Mm -hmm. At the time, I'll be on the same mindset that I do now. I'm like, okay, Chris, um, you're making gonna make two hundred dollars a month. Divide that into thirty thousand. How mm -hmm. long is it gonna take you to make that thirty thousand? Yeah, and it makes sense to sell. Yeah, yep. But now, know what I know now. You hold on to that property, you refinance it, mm -hmm. you pull out tax-free proceeds. Mm -hmm. The house keeps appreciating. Mm -hmm. You make cash flow forever. Mm -hmm. You get depreciation. Mm -hmm. You don't pay capital gains. Mm -hmm. That's a whole other mindset. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So you can make a whole lot more money in that one house. Mm -hmm. Also, uh, one of the reasons I got out of the single family is because, you know, when you buy and sell, you, you do all the hard work to find the property. Yeah. All the hard work to get up to market value mm -hmm. of fixing it. I mean, mm -hmm. Who knows how many contracts you've been through and then you end up lifting a hammer because you have to do the work because they never showed up. And then you have the property that's mint condition, ready to go. Mm -hmm. And once you sell, you're never make another dollar in that house. Yeah, again. exactly. Yeah. So buy and hold, it just makes too much sense. Yes, exactly. Uh, so it's, it's again, back to big different mindset. It makes sense to make 30,000 now. Mm -hmm. But yeah. then when you can refi and pull out most of that 30,000 tax free yeah. and hold that money machine forever, yeah. that's it. Yeah. So back to what's your question again? <laughs> uh, so the, the, the question was three million uh, oh. today or uh, you can go back to high school knowledge yeah. that you know. Yeah, knowledge is king. I mean, I, I wouldn't be where I am right now unless I was 
mimicking what other successful people were doing. Yeah. And if I had that knowledge back in high school, my trajectory would be completely different. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that, that makes sense. And yeah, I'm a, listen, I'm a buy and hold guy. You know, I maybe sold, I think, what, one or two properties, but you know, it's funny, I get, you know, mailers and phone calls and I tell everybody, they're, you know, all the properties that I have right now are going to the grave with me, you know, because I look at generational wealth. Um, you know, I know how hard my parents worked, but, um, you know, people joke around with me and saying, man, if, you know, if, if you had a real estate portfolio, you know, left for you, you'd be a billionaire by now. Um, who knows, right? It kind of goes back to that trajectory, right? But I have still the same mindset of, you know, working hard and, and getting there. But yeah, I'm definitely a buy and hold guy. And, and, would, and buy and hold, what that means is you just buy, you know, property uh, and you hold it, uh, meaning you don't sell it, you just collect money as a, as a landlord. So I know some people aren't really hip to the land or the uh, real estate uh, lingo yet. Well, hold on a second. Back to the buy and hold. I mean, when I was, you know, the, the landlord, a younger uh -huh. landlord, uh -huh. um, and this is a lesson that I taught my older partner, Bruce. Mm -hmm. He takes things personally. <laughs> and when you have a bad tenant that, you know, this is pretty basic business. You pay your rent, you can stay. Yeah. That, that's yeah. about what it is. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's a business, you know, I'm not running a charity. Mm -hmm. I'm not a philanthropist yet. Yeah. I'm not giving money away. Uh, but I would take things personally way back when tenant was not moving, they weren't paying rent, and mm -hmm. I didn't want to foreclose, that would cost me money, I was mm -hmm. thinking small. Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't sleep at night, like, this is the business I wanna be in, because that tenant is driving me crazy. Yeah. But then, you know, as, as I'm getting older, it's like, you go to the tenant, listen, a lot of you are a great person, but it's strictly business, here's your three day notice. Yeah. yeah. Strictly business, yeah. nothing personal. Mm -hmm. And once you change that mindset mm -hmm. and don't get pulled into somebody's drama that's not your drama, yeah. then your life gets easier. Yeah. And then you understand that you're running a business and you're not taking anything personally. So that's that's one lesson that it took me a long time to figure out. Yeah. Um, but it's sometimes more stressful when you, know, you only have you know, two, three, four, five, mm -hmm. ten properties mm -hmm. and then yeah. you know, one tenant not paying rent can really put you in a bind. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But you gotta get the same mindset. It's a business, run it as a business, mm -hmm. nothing's personal, yeah. and you move on. Yeah, I agree, 100% agree. Uh, in, a, in a very similar boat, um, you know, but hey, call the lawyer, this address, doctor up the paperwork, send me the bill, keep moving, you know, they go there, separate way, I go my separate way, and yeah, you just can't take it personal because Unfortunately, you can't help the people who don't want to help themselves. Yeah, and you, so, you want to sleep the night you do. That, that's uh, facts, because trust me, they're sleeping like a baby. <laughs> <laughs> For free. Yeah, yeah, there you go. <laughs> exactly, right? <laughs> exactly. So, all right. So, I, I, I'm excited for this one. So, would you rather have Cavs floor seats oh. for a year, okay. or would you rather be on the sidelines for a Cleveland Browns Super Bowl game? Ooh. Oh, I, I've never seen this. I'm not sure if it's ever going to happen. Browns. <laughs> Browns. Got to be with the Browns. I mean, Cavs are great, yeah. but, you know, it's the ultimate U.S. sport. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, mano y mano. These guys are going at each other. Yeah. And um, we've never seen it here. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I've suffered through a, lo a lot of years, just like you have, yes. obviously. Yes, yes, yes. Um, We've seen the championship with LeBron here. We've seen yeah. that happen. Oh yeah. And without a star on the court mm -hmm. that you know is going to make ESPN on a regular mm -hmm. basis, I want to see some incredible play. Yeah. yeah. But when it comes to football, you know, a bomb, uh -huh. you know, fifty yards touchdown pass. Yeah. That's too exciting. Yeah. Yeah. My partner has uh, fifty yard. Uh, fifty yard line seats. Nice. Uh, generational seats. Okay. Nice. And so it's nice being real close. Yeah. And especially <laughs> if it comes to you know a Super Bowl game. Yeah. Forget about it. Yeah. You gotta oh, yeah. be there. Oh yeah. No, I, I I agree. And and it's you know I think this too is is Cleveland specific, right? Mm -hmm. Because you know a lot of you know you ask maybe a Chiefs, you know fan and you know they may they don't understand. understand yeah. It, it, it's, our pain. It, exactly. It's 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 not the it's not the same. Um, you know especially when I mean yeah when the Cavs won. In 2016, man, that was... It's so unbelievable. Like, oh my did goodness. they really win? Yeah. I was like, no, yeah. am I dreaming? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I remember where I was. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I think you ask anybody. I can tell you exactly where I was because, you know, I, I was living in Las Vegas, but I flew back, you know, and, and just working, you know, in Las Vegas, working with those people. Like, why would you 
take a flight back, you know, just to see them get it. win. I said, because it's one of those things where, I don't know, who knows, it, it may happen again in my lifetime, but I knew I'd be kicking myself saying, you know, I was at this, you know, random place in Las Vegas. It's like, no, I was in Cleveland. I was actually at the Renaissance Hotel connected to the, uh, connected to the casino. And uh, I specifically remember and coming down the elevator and everybody screaming. everybody screaming, everybody yelling, went out in the streets and you got, I remember a guy doing the, you know, the, the famous LeBron, uh, you know, I forget what it's called, you know, hitting his chest. He was on top of a fire truck. Did he have baby powder? Uh, so he did not have baby powder, no. <laughs> uh, he, he didn't have baby powder. Actually, he wasn't on top of a fire truck. He was on top of an RTA bus. Oh. Uh, he was literally wow. on an RTA bus. So it was one person and then like 20 people went up there and it was just crazy. The police are just watching. Um, you know, it was probably the most, it, it was one of the best feelings ever because it didn't matter, you know, what skin color you were. It didn't matter where you came from, you know, where you were in society as far as, you know, if you were successful or not. Every single person was just so happy. Why is that? It's just a game. I don't know. I, you know, I would love to like, you know, break down the, the dynamics of that and like why sports bring people so well together and why when you see somebody in a, a Golden State Warrior or something like that, I mean, people really get physical with each other, right? Like, why does that, you know, it, you know, what kicks that off when people are fighting when they go to, you know, different arenas and it's okay, right? But if this person came just in a regular white t-shirt, you know, they would be fine. You know, it's just what, you know, what social thing or what, you know, psychological thing kicks off in somebody's brain when they see that. So above, above my pay grade. Yeah. Hey, way, way above mine too. Way, way above mine. So, but, uh, yeah, that was, I tell you what, man, you know, being a, a Cleveland fan, um, you know, we, we, we've taken on the chin a lot, but I tell you what, I, I love Cleveland sports. Um, and, and the sports teams, you know, embody our city, right? We're just yeah. hard workers, you know, just put our head down and, and, and just go on a lot of people. You know, there's not a lot of opportunity in Cleveland. Well, that's that's not necessarily the case. Obviously, we don't have the best you know, reputation, um, you know, but I think it's starting to change. You know, I think a lot of people are really There's a lot of money here. here. Oh, yeah, there I is. I mean, I'm, I'm seeing uh, these apartment buildings that, you know, rents are two, 3000 a mm -hmm. month. Yeah. Uh, so, locations, everything, of course. Uh, 100%, yeah, 100%. So, Midwest City, you guys are looking. And Cleveland is a great city to uh, invest in. So, um, okay, all right. So, uh, if you lost everything, mm. what would be your plan B? Everything I'm talking about, you know, money, uh, you know, the physical assets from you know houses to cars. Essentially, you know, if if you woke up homeless with with not even a cell phone tomorrow, what would your plan be? Oof. I know I can't work for anybody, <laughs> but if I did, I'd be a hard worker. Um, back to my roots, digging through foreclosures. Yeah, I I know how to do it. Yeah, you know, I, this is what brought me to a certain stage in my life. Where yeah. now I, you know, I'm jumping off of that to apartments. Yeah, so digging for gold. Nice, nice. That's it. Uh, just you know, looking under a rock, trying to find that equity and mm -hmm. trying to make a deal happen. Nice, nice. And, and I'm assuming you would you utilize the public resources as far as you know, uh, going to public libraries and, and different things that to use the internet and stuff like that. Oh well, now you're going basic, basic, aren't you? <laughs> uh, yeah, because actually, what I used to do, I just go to the records room. Okay. I yeah. Okay. There, there you go. And yeah. I, I would have the legal news because there was no internet at that time. Okay. And I. I'd look at every single deal, I'd ask for that file, I would flip through that file, and then, uh, you know, I got to learn every single street in Akron, so I know where I didn't want to be. Nice. Well, I know, at least now I know I don't want to be. Yeah. Um, and so that was it, that's really the basics, you know. Um, public information is public information. Yeah. Every civil action is public. Read the, read the uh, complaint. Read the preliminary judicial report, it's like a title search, and then read the docket, see where it is in the process, find out where people are living, and knock on that door and talk to people. Nice. Obviously, knocking on doors, I had that experience way back in yeah. the day. Yeah, there you go. Full circle of life, yeah. right? No, that's, uh, that's cool. If you might be asking, where, I guess, how many units do you manage right now? Or own? Between um, houses, self storage, and apartments, about 300. Wow. Wow, <laughs> that's that's 
Yeah, about two hundred. That that that's very impressive. That's that's really cool. Let me ask you this: So, how long did it take you to kind of get to that? Um, how, how, two questions: How long did it take you to get to that, and where was that like? I don't want to call it an aha moment, but maybe that moment in your life where you're like, all right, well, you know, this is, you know, this is working. You know, I'm able to, you know, go from maybe buying a double or a single to, okay, I, I bought 10 units. Well, mine was like, I catapulted uh, from singles mm -hmm. to looking for, um, I, I didn't own any multifamily. I mean, I've, I've bought, sold, and, mm -hmm. and everything about 500 over the years. But um, I went straight from singles into uh, self-storage while I was looking for multifamily. Okay. I was looking for multifamily and got this relationship with a realtor. He goes, would you guys be interested in self-storage? And one of my best friends, uh, he has self-storage and I always admired that asset class and actually tried to buy his property, but uh, it, you know, he, he got primo dollar for it. So I didn't okay. get it. Yeah. But um, the realtor came to the table and he had somebody that was in a uh, divorce situation esque mm -hmm. that is a family business and it was in our backyard and we made an offer on it, we bought it, uh, Bruce and I, after we started our, our business, then we had to figure out how to run self storage. I really don't know how to do it. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, guess what? Figure it out. Yeah. Now yeah. we got it running, then we bought a secondary one because it just sort of popped up. Yeah. But every time you buy something, that's gonna set you back time-wise because you have to operate it, get it operated, yep. and then move on to the next one. Mm -hmm. So then it seems like every year we're buying something big. We bought a 66 unit uh, in August. So nice. we're stabilizing that right now. Nice. And so really when I partnered up, that's when things exploded because our vision was large. We're nice. look, matter of fact, we were so depressed about and not being able to find a deal, multifamily, making offers on a lot of them, mm -hmm. you know, just striking out, mm -hmm. that <laughs> we were like an idiot. I went and bought another foreclosure. Was, <laughs> and uh, I'm like, what am I doing this yeah, for? Yeah. I ended up making 4,000, wasting you know, six months of my life. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and so uh, <laughs> that was another reminder that I never want to go back yeah. to singles. Yeah. I want multiple yeah. doors. Yeah. And the only way you're going to do that is with partnerships, mm -hmm. syndicating, bringing people in, bringing value. Uh, but it, it's really the aha moment was really about five years ago uh, when Bruce and I started uh, started our, our business and we were like, you know what we're going for. So we yeah. made, we went out and looked at a 950 T unit development wow. in Toledo wow. and we met all the managers. We're putting together the deal, putting, um, um, we didn't get the deal, mm -hmm. but we didn't know we couldn't get the deal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's always a yes until it's a no. Yeah, exactly, right, yeah. So, I mean, they wanted us to buy it, uh, ended up selling for like, you know, 32 million or something. Gonna, yeah, gonna... <laughs> um, and we find out that, you know, the lender that we closed with on a 66 unit, uh, that deal that was sold to some people from Brooklyn mm -hmm. still haven't closed on it. Wow. They have it, under, have it under contract. They keep putting more down payment money down, wow. haven't closed, they're operating it, and I don't know how that's working, <laughs> but <laughs> kind of funny that it came full circle and yeah. the vendor that I, that I closed with now knew that deal wow. five years ago. But it was really about you know having higher ambitions than what you know mm -hmm. and using the examples of people that succeeded to duplicate that information mm -hmm. and making it happen put one foot in front of the other, and just keep going forward and you're learning as you go. Yeah. And, and now, you know, we close deals, we've mm -hmm. executed, mm -hmm. uh, we're operating, mm -hmm. we're raising rents, yeah. we're fixing units up. Nice. Um, so it's really been a, a, the five year period when I decided that I want to go to multifamily and that's what I wanted. Bruce uh, was the guy that was in my life at that time and I knew he was looking to do something to do with my other friends. Mm -hmm and he was looking for multifamily. And um, so it's about joining and, because sometimes you second guess yourself. Yeah, definitely. So it's good to have somebody that is your mirror. Yeah. That you can talk to them and you can, and you can bounce things against each other. Mm -hmm. It helps sharpen your own tool by yep. doing that. Or you can teach somebody how to do something. Yeah, exactly. Because you, you're listening to your self-talk 
yep. and you can catch where okay that's not right how am i going to fix that what, yep. what 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 where do i have to turn to make that work exactly uh but back to your question five years ago and it seems like once we start rolling we're buying one bigger deal a year nice and nice. this then closed you know last august and now now we're looking at a 200 unit wow wow that's gonna yeah because i know you're at 300 right now so yeah that's that'll just catapult it that's awesome no that's really cool and just yeah figuring it out as you go you know i i can't stress that enough you know it's it, it, like you said, it's, it's a yes until it's a no, right? And, yeah. and sometimes you do realize, like, wow, this is easier than I thought. Yeah, um, you know. It's not easy. Yeah. But you're going to, and I've heard this and I've experienced it, that buying one property and spending time getting that thing up and operating, mm -hmm. a little more effort and you can buy a 100 unit property. Yeah. But then that means you put together your business, you brought your investors along with you, they know you, they like you, they trust you, they yeah. know that you. You know you're a good uh, um, uh, you know uh, fiduciary yeah and it, that you're gonna follow through and they they can count on you to execute yeah and you're not gonna lose their money yeah yeah no one's ever lost a dollar with me thank god uh but it's because we made these offers on deals that make sense yeah and we know you know if you're a failure is it's gonna work mm -hmm. yeah you know if I lose money, fine, but no one coming with me is going to lose any money. That's that's awesome. And, and that's really the trust factor. Mm -hmm. you got to trust who you're doing business with. Yeah, exactly. No, 100%. Um, so let me ask you this. Five years from now, you mm -hmm. know, in a perfect world, where, where do you see your business being? Where do you see you, mm -hmm. you know, yourself, and where do you see your business being five years from now? I'm thinking about my family. And uh, my son is 16, he'll be 21. Okay. Nice. Um, he has certain skill sets. I don't know what they are yet. <laughs> Not skill sets, but he has this thing, the X factor. Yeah. I don't know where he gets it. Uh, but um, maybe he's taken over. Uh, I, I'm showing him things that it took me till you know, I was 40 years old mm -hmm. to learn. Mm -hmm. He's got it now. Mm -hmm. He's seeing it. I'm walking around talking all day at home. Mm -hmm. You know, I teach him what cap rate is. Mm -hmm. I didn't know what cap rate is yeah. until five years ago. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> these little things, you know, it's all about educating yourself, putting yourself in front of those guys that are doing it. Yeah. But, you know, I, I, I keep saying a thousand units and I think it might come sooner than five years, depending mm -hmm. on how we, how we run our business. Mm -hmm. But, I really want to bring more valuable people into my group Nice. that can take, cause I'm doing a lot of jobs, mm -hmm. you know, putting out content, mm -hmm. building investor relations, mm -hmm. uh, finding deals, uh, realtor relations, mm -hmm. operating, managing the managers, um, just all that stuff. It's just a, everything's a, its own little job, mm -hmm. but I, I, I need to pull in these people that now this 100 unit building already figured in the underwrite that I can pay this guy to do that, the other guy to do that, mm -hmm. so on and so forth. Yeah. And now I can sustain a, a valuable business that's uh, running itself mm -hmm. with oversight. Nice. So that's really the goal. Nice, okay, nice. All right, well, kind of start to wrap it up here a little bit. I got you know one more question for you. So if you had to give your younger self life advice, you know, or anybody younger watching this life advice, what life advice would that be? Surround yourself with people that are where you want to be. Nice. Nice. That, that's so powerful. And, and walk away from people who don't have the same vision as you. You know, I hate to say burning bridges, but Sometimes you just got to walk away from relationships that don't bring value to your life. Yeah. Unless they're your family. <laughs> yeah. Then you're stuck. <laughs> yeah. And you're giving to arm's length. Yeah. <laughs> no, that, that's so true. Listen, and, and, and really understand, you know, what that means. And, and because, yeah, it, it just negative people. I talk about this a lot, too. You know, keeping negative people around you can just be so mentally draining for you. Just the who the glass half empty people who uh, I, I drove over here I got stuck in traffic I hit a pothole I 
you know, I, I did this, I did this, I did this. It's like, well, you woke up this morning, you know, and, you know, you got to do a podcast, right? Like, let's talk about, like, the, the positives that are happening in your life. But there's just so many just, you know, just negative people who just find negative in any, oh, we're going to this concert, and the line is long, and, you know, it, the, everything is concert. expense. Exactly, right? <laughs> like, it's, it's just the... The, the concept of like, I'm not going to the sports because like, you know, I'm not going to the Cavs game because everything's expensive. And it's like, but you get to watch Donovan Mitchell play. You know, you get to watch the opposing team bring whoever it is, you know, right? Like look at the big you picture. You're not in the, the sub-Saharan Africa. Exactly. Right, you got water. Yes. Clean water. Yes, yes, yes. You're not eating gruel. Yes. You can go get a burger <laughs> down the street. Exactly. Yeah, you know, it's, it's all perspective, right? Yeah, that's it, man. That that's it. And and <clears throat> what what was the quote that you said? Oh my goodness, it, it's all it was all smoke and mirrors until it, brick and mortar. Yeah, or something. it's kind of funny. Yes, uh, <laughs> Bruce and I are sitting in um, our office, and way back in the day, you know, you kind of you want to say fake it till you make it. Yeah. Yep. Yep. But you really have to be a chameleon in life. Uh huh. You're not the same person you are today that you were yesterday. Yeah, exactly. So the question is, how fast do you want to become that other person? Mm -hmm. And you, you're really putting together the piece of your mindset, looking forward a lot further than you are. Mm -hmm. and, and when you can see yourself in the future, your feet lead you that way. Yeah. I mean, if you're looking at, I just want to get a job today, then that's, that's your dead end. Yeah. If you don't have a dead end, then it, 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 the you know, world's your oyster. Yeah. yeah. But. Um, it's, it's really back to your mindset scenario. Um, and what's the question again? <laughs> yeah, well, the, the overall question was, uh, you know, what your younger self life advice. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so back to surrounding yourself with the right people. you got to put yourself in the position with the people that are, again, doing what you want to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And negativity, uh, getting away from negative people, as you yeah. said, because mm -hmm. that's not going to achieve anything. Yeah, yeah. Um, you just gotta put yourself in a good mindset with mm -hmm. the right people. Yeah, hundred percent. And bring a value. You know, I think if you're just always that person who's just you know kind of hanging around and, and don't bring value to that person. And again, it, value doesn't always have to be monetarily. You know, value mm -hmm. doesn't have to be just again like being a positive person, right? Like mm -hmm. I love hanging around just literally just positive people, people who just have great energy. And, and you know, somebody did gave me. I, I think one of the biggest compliments anybody's ever gave me was they said, "Listen, man, when, when you walk into a room." You know, you just, you make everybody's day better. You, you just, your smile is a very infectious and you can just tell like you're just a very happy person. I'm like, wow. That's... I remember what I was gonna say, last thing. Smoke and mirrors becomes brick and mortar. Yes. Now, Bruce and I were sitting there in the office, looking around, it's like, wow, we bought this. Because mm -hmm. we were throwing everything against the wall. Mm -hmm. We were putting ourselves in position. We were faking it until we made it. And lo and behold, now we own a bunch of brick and mortar. Yeah. It was smoke and mirrors first. Yeah. yeah. That's that's cool. You know, and that would, once you, you know, take a step back and realize like, wow, you know, what we've been working towards, we've accomplished, you know, and it's now what, you know, and it's kind of funny that you kind of, sounds like you put maybe a, a cap on the, the big goal that you're trying to hit. It sounds like a thousand units. Um, and you know, my goal is 20,000 passive a month and people have asked, what are you going to do when you get there? And I said, I, I'm probably not going to stop. Right. It's just, right. that's just kind of the, the, you know, ceiling, you know, that I'm at, but this may only be the second floor, you know, my building may be 20 floors. You know? My time is limited. I'm 55. So like I've sold some of my legacy properties on land contract and 15 year land contracts mm -hmm. because I was too busy with multifamily to mm -hmm. really rehab and another yeah. property and hurt yeah. get away from operating. So that's gonna put me at 70. Nice. So I'm okay yeah. with dealing over a property at 70. Yeah, yeah, exactly, right? Yeah, it, everybody's at different, you know, aspects of their life, you know? I, I think there's a, a kid, I wanna see he's like 17 or 18 that's been coming to the, you know, he's probably 19 now, but he's been coming to the meetups. And I said, listen, man, like, you know, I, I actually, I don't know, what is it, 18 you can buy and sell real estate, I believe? Um, yeah, anybody can be beat at a property. True facts, yeah. That, that is a baby a property. Yeah, true. That that is true. Um, you know, but I told him to listen, man. Like you were just so many years ahead of all of us because you know a lot of us just didn't get started until I think I got started in my late twenties. But um, you know, just knowledge is is so cool. Just the fact that you have this mindset at at, at your age. I said there's nobody in their teens that are even here, let alone you know soaking this in. And and I tell people too, like just. 
you know, especially when, like when it comes to working out, like literally 10% is the physical aspect of it. 10% is actually doing the motion of working out or running or whatnot. The 90% is getting to the gym. <laughs> um, that's the mindset. I'm like, as soon as you've walked through the doors, you've actually completed your, your, your workout. It's just getting there. And luckily, you know, in this apartment complex, I have a gym here, so it makes it a little easier for me. But, you know, it's a very little below bar. Showing up. Yeah. yeah. Is all you got to, most of the time, just show up. That's it. That's it. You know, especially when it comes to networking. You'll stumble across events. something. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Coming to the networking events, like you coming, literally, just, you know, you are light, you're 10 steps ahead of the average person because, like you said, everybody, you know, everybody wants to be, you know, in real estate, it's, it's this, you know, easy thing, um, you know, but you can't get people to show up because it's just, you know, hey, I, my job or this came up or that came up or this came up. But when you really time block it, right, like if, if you want to go to a concert, you're going to time block that. You're going to, you know, ask for time off. You're going to make sure that you're going to that concert because maybe you spent X amount of money that you never would have spent on that. And it's like when you really time block things in your life that are very important to you, whether it's working out, whether it's going to networking events, whether it's, you know, this, this, and that, you know, you will make, you know, you will make it a priority to, to, to go. And I highly encourage that on things that are going to make, enhance your life. Sometimes we think that little things, I make it a, a point to go to networking events because I enjoy it, um, you know, and, and it enhances That's our, our concert. Life. That's it. That's our you're, concert, you're right. man. You're right. You you are you are so right. So yeah, it's, it's fun. It's you know, hey, what are you doing the you know the Thursday at the end of the month? Well, what time? Ah, uh, like seven o'clock. I'm already gonna be somewhere. So <laughs> sorry, it's already it's already in, in, in my head. You know, what about the second Thursday? Uh, I'm already gonna be somewhere there too. So, but uh, yeah, well, I, I, did you want to leave anybody with any you know advice or you know you wanna you know kind of um, you know well, share anything? Um, I'm always about putting content out. Mm -hmm. So uh, we have educational stuff that I put mm -hmm. out. Because I mean, again, that's sharp as me. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so on our, our website, Cypress Ventures Group, we have passive income and all kinds of lessons. We teach, you know, what NOI is, what mm -hmm. cap rate is. Nice. Um, you know, all, all those things that I didn't know mm -hmm that I've learned over the past, you know, five to 10 years, Yeah, we put that out. So we have also a um, constant contact list of about 400 people that we put these pieces out first to them. So nice. they can help educate themselves. So they can understand how it works. Nice. So we're looking to educate people so they feel comfortable doing whatever they want to do in real estate. Nice, nice, nice. Now definitely uh, get, uh, get that link in it out there and that's and that's awesome too like, you know people understand like what really drives you is adding value to other people's lives you know that's so cool and that's such a unique concept and I think that's amazing um, you can tell that you're passionate about it and like I said once you know I always say you know a cheat code um, you know it, it's good that you you know you get to wake up every day and do something that you like but it's a cheat code in life when you get to wake up every single day do something that you like and also make money from it um, so but uh, yeah if, if that's all you got I want to thank you guys for making it this far. Uh, thank you for you know listening to the Listen Up for Me and Learn Something Today podcast, and uh, I will uh, I'll see you next time. Hey man, I appreciate it.